Hey guys, um, you probably have figured out by now that one of my favourite subjects is breathing. Um, love writing about it, love talking about it, love taking people through it, and basically I don't go a day without it. Um, at the moment, the topic of breathing has never been so hot, and this is really cool. So, it's, it's actually fashionable. When I was first figuring out uh, being taught uh, about using breathing exercises, breath practice as it's known now, um, it was heavily in the the woo categories, the, the yoga people, the meditation people, um, the, the real traditional martial arts people. Now, it's everywhere. Athletes are talking about it. Regular people are talking about it. It's brilliant. Um, so, where do we start? So many places you can start with a breath practice. There's so many ways you can do it. Now, I talk a lot about nose breathing. And this is the thing that everybody gets a little bit kind of agitated about. Uh, because your nose is constantly blocked. You can't breathe through your nose. Blah, blah, blah. And you know what? You're probably right. To get around this, I'm not going to tell you what to do right now. What I'm going to do is advise you to go to YouTube... Look up Patrick McKeown, M-C-K-E-O-W-N, okay? He is the guy I learned about potato breathing from. Um, he's a top loke, he's a lad from Galway, he's a down-to-earth, and it, but he's blown up. He's kind of this worldwide phenomenon, this expert on breathing, and it's well-deserved. Um, so you look up him on YouTube, he's a video how to unblock your nose. Um, we'll, we'll go through the basics of it right now. It's as simple as potato breathing is all about nose breathing. So the idea is, you shut your mouth, take a natural breath in, natural breath out. Now you might be struggling with that. That's okay, you do what you can. The key is on the out breath, when you breathe out, you stop, you hold your breath. Okay, so it's a quick breath in. However long. Just a few seconds, you could be nodding your head, you could be walking up and down, you could be doing something, tapping, it doesn't really matter. Just, just something that just distracts you for a little minute, get you away from that panic. Until you feel that sort of, the body really wants to inhale. So now you're gonna try and Inhale as naturally and as softly and as normally as possible. If you really get to that panic breath stage, you've taken the breath hold too far. So anyway, you can actually hear my nose actually blocking up just a little bit because I'm talking and I am now mouth breathing out of necessity. So anyway. Simple as that. Do that. Three, four cycles, maybe half a dozen cycles. Your breathing should be clear. All right? It doesn't take much. That, you can probably do that. You get up in the morning. You stick the kettle on to make yourself a cup of coffee. You could probably have your nose cleared by the time the kettle's boiled. If you use this drill. And it's as simple as you just keep pottering around that kitchen. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, stop, hold for until you feel the first strong urge to breathe in. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, stop. Okay? By the time the kettle's boiled, you've probably done three, four, five cycles. Your nose is probably clearer. Patrick McCowan has a great video on this. He'll take you through it. What do you do then? It's up to you. It's up to you. 
the very first method I got taught, and this is actually what I wanted to, to talk about in the video, uh, the very first method I got taught, I was a teenager, I was in karate, and I can't remember what level I was at the time, I'm going to say a brown belt of some degree, um, and I was sat with the instructor, Jack Parker, and Jack's probably one of the biggest influences for everything I've ever done, because he was constantly curious. He wasn't just a karate instructor. He started out in bodybuilding, he went through go jitsu into karate, and he never stopped looking up, researching, finding out better ways for us to train, introducing new ideas, keeping things fresh and interesting. And so much of the way I've taught since um, is massively influenced by him. But one thing that really stood out He'd done a few yoga classes, and in the yoga class, they'd done what they call 448 breathing. Jack taught it to us. So we had us all kneeling down, and quite often when you kneel and you do your bowing in at the beginning of the class, the, um, the traditional Japanese word would be mokso, which is a period of sitting quietly, so that you're meant to empty your mind and prepare for the training ahead, and at the end of the class, you're meant to empty your mind and prepare to go back into the real world. Jack would take us through this breathing drill sometimes, and it would be breathe in for a four count, hold it for a four count, breathe out for an eight count. Now, since then, I've decided that those numbers are not really that important. The ratio is important. So you breathe in for one, out for one. Oh, sorry, in one, hold one, out for eight. Okay, so the ratio is more important yeah so it's kind of like you breathe in you hold you breathe out Alrighty. oops i've lost that so you're in you're holding you're out your out is always double so it's a one one two yeah which could be two two four it could be ten ten twenty it doesn't really matter the ratio accounts Depends how fast you count, depends how big your lung capacity, how efficient your diaphragm is, how stressed out you are, what your carbon dioxide tolerance is, and blah, and blah, and blah, and blah. Doesn't matter. Four, four, eight. Yeah? In, hold, out. Simple. Why this stood out to me as a teenager, right? I'm 44 now, so we're talking 30 years ago, right? There was a lad in the class, pretty sure it was Stewie. And if you're watching this, Stewie, how are you, mate? It might not have been him, that's just the name that, that rings a bell. And he had really bad asthma. This is actually why he came to karate, to get fit, to help his asthma. Now, as a bad asthma sufferer, he had frequent checkups with the doctor where they tested his lung capacity. Um, I, I'm not an asthma sufferer. I don't really know too much about the procedures, but um, I was stood with Jack as everybody was coming in, just helping him do the registration for the class, when Stewie arrived in and his mum, and his mum says, Jack, we were at the doctor's. For the regular checkup, the lung capacity, and the doctor told me that Stuart's lung capacity had increased by 30%. 30%. A one third increase in his ability to get air in and out of his lungs. Stewie had taken the 448 breathing and he'd started doing it every night when he went to bed. Breathe in four, hold four, breathe out eight. Yeah? Don't know what he started. He could have started breathing two, out two, hold four. Then three in, three out, hold six. Um, I'm getting my words all muddled up here. Um, in, in, hold, out. 
he might have just increased it. So 224, 336, 448, 5510, 10, 10, 20. Who knows? But a one third increase in his lung capacity that made his doctor nearly fall off his chair. Like, it, this, this is incredible. So the fact that breathing, breath work, has gotten so popular now. The last couple of years have been amazing. With the likes of Patrick McCown, Brian McKenzie, these these two sort of superstars. You've got James Nestor um, with his amazing book, Breath. Um, it's come out of the world of woo, the science research being done um, to support the value of breath work. So all I ask you is just find a few minutes here and there through the day. Doesn't matter whether it's one minute or 10 minutes. Yeah, Doesn't matter whether you do it once a day, twice a day, 10 times a day. That you just find a bit of time, maybe do Patrick McCowan's Toko nose clearing exercise. Maybe try the 448 method that we've just described. If you want to breathe in through your nose, breathe out through your mouth. I don't care. At this stage, it does not matter. What matters is you do something. Something's better than nothing, right? In time, your nose may start to adapt. You may find it clears easier. In time, you may default to nasal-only breathing. Within context, of course. Um, so that's basically all I was going to talk about today. Uh, but honestly, there's, there's no reason not to do this. If you can get to five minutes... Five minutes of four, four, eight. Just build up to it with whatever you can do. Start where you are. In time, you get to four, four, eight for five minutes continuous. Brilliant. Brilliant. Now try walking. Try counting your steps, four paces, breathing in. Yeah? Four paces holding. Eight paces breathing out. Can you do that? Um, play around with it. Honestly, play around with it. Breathing is great. It's a vital skill because it's so fundamental. It's so, um, you know, you just do it so automatically. People take it for granted, but really don't. Really don't. It is quite possibly the biggest tool in your toolbox that you have right now without going out and buying equipment. It's not sexy, it's not flashy, you can't show it off. Um, but your ability to breathe well, to provide every cell in your body with adequate gas exchange, oxygen in, carbon dioxide out, to, to get that diaphragm muscle pumping which changes the the, the nerve action the the, the the vagus nerve the stress response all these knock-on effects of improved breathing um i'm going to stop there before we get quite evangelistic and start really harping on but um you've got to look up patrick mccown sure look up brian mckenzie the guy's a genius um and you'll do well as always, let me know how you get on, and uh, I'm sure I'll be back talking to you soon.